Pathway family, thank you for tuning in. God has an amazing word for you. So go ahead and check out this message. And after, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We love you. God bless. Really, tonight, it's a special night. And what I mean by that is, God was talking to me. He said, son, tonight, I'm going to show people how to overcome and get free. But this is the thing. They're going to actually tonight overcome and they're going to get free. So it's one thing to just learn something, right? But it's another thing to do it. It's one thing to hear information, but it's another thing for that information to seek into your heart to a place where you want to come repent and get help and get free. And so if you're struggling with anything tonight, there's freedom for you. Tonight is a night where, you see, I believe that as Christians, we go through things behind the scenes as believers, as non-believers, Every single person, we all struggle. And sometimes we struggle and we get caught up into cycles. And sometimes we find ourselves in those cycles and we're trying to figure out how do I break this cycle? I'm in a cycle of sin, how do I break it? And tonight we're gonna learn how to break these cycles. I wanna just honor Pastor Marco and Pastor Lisa, if you guys could give them a hand, I mean, man, they have been a huge, huge blessing in my life. And <laughs> huge blessing. I didn't know that was going to happen right there, but, <laughs> you know, I just really appreciate where I'm at in my life. <clears throat> I have some, some friends that I went to school with. Say what's up, wave your hands up. They're, they got some friends over there from high school that came out. And they know me. They know me. They did some things with me. <laughs> they see me do some things. And look at me today. And I say that to say because it's all glory to Jesus, man. Only Jesus, only Jesus could truly transform a person. And I just want to say thank you, Pastor Marco, for just always being loving. And not only loving, but being consistent. We have a pastor who's consistent day in and day out. I see him behind the scenes for the last six to seven years and last six years and I could bank on if I go to his house, I guarantee you he's studying the Bible. I've seen him preach and I've seen him practice his preachings. And I'm standing here today because God has used him to help me become the man of God that God has called me to be in. I want to thank my wife, Abriana. Abriana is six months pregnant. I'm about to be a daddy. What's up? Jeez. If you say if I'm ready, I'm going to say no. I'm not ready, but I'm excited. I'm willing. I'm willing. I think I, I'm, I'm willing. If you got tips, start sending me uh, messages on Instagram. Give me tips, man. I need all I could get. She's six months pregnant. She's beautiful. And she's, um, you know, she's really, I couldn't ask for anything better than what I got. Actually, what I was asking for, it was a high, a high enough standard got, that God said I got something way better than for, you, than for you. And so I love you, Abriana, and thank you. I don't know what, what's up with this anointing. I'm all emotional. I'm over here just. <laughs> man, y'all got. Man. Edit that out of it on, Insta, on the video. Edit that out. No, I'm just kidding. I was just kidding. No, it's okay. It's good. That's all good. So, I just, I, I, I don't know what it is. I think, I think it's what, 
we have to just really take time to embrace where you're at. Wow, that's good. I believe that we could get so distracted on where we're going to go yeah. and what's happening now. And I believe that when you get in a place where you just, just be thankful for where you're at, you're alive today. Yeah. Praise God, you're breathing right now. You're alive right now. And many of us here, we've gotten so close to death, and, but you're here. This is a beautiful thing. There's so many things to be grateful for. There's things in our lives that we have to die to, though. And there's things that we have to lay down. As I speak this message today, I want you to think about what is the thing that you have that you want to lay down to God tonight? Because everyone here, we're going to take action as a family. We're going to take action as, as, a, as a church. And what we're going to do is there's some stuff we're going to go digging. There's some stuff we have in our closet. There's some secret sins that we got. And this message is for every single person. If you're a leader, this is for you too. If you're serving, serving here, this is for you too. If you're not a non-believer, this is for you too. This is for all of us tonight. That we would examine ourselves and learn how to overcome sin. Three keys in overcoming sin in our lives. Number one, the first key to overcoming sin in our lives is stop feeding your sin. Stop feeding our, our sinful nature. Proverbs 15, 14. You guys are going to like this one. It says, a, a wise person is hungry for knowledge, while the fool, it feeds on trash. Someone say, ouch. He's saying, if, if, if you're wise, you're feeding and you're going after knowledge of God. You're, going, you're reading the word. We're pursuing God. We're pursuing wisdom. The beginning of all wisdom is the what? The fear of God. Say, those people that pursue God and pursue wisdom, it's... All those people are wise, but it says the fool, we get caught up in some trash, though. How many of you guys could admit that well, sometimes we could be a little foolish? Right? The word feed in the Hebrew translates to ra'ah. Yeah, you just learned some Hebrew right now, so go, go ahead and put that on your Instagram. I learned some Hebrew today. Ra'ah, what does it mean? To shepherd. It means to tend to. It also means to nourish. You see, sometimes what we're doing with our sin is we're, instead of kicking it out of our lives, we're beginning to now take care of that sin. We're beginning to nourish it. We're beginning to help it grow. There's some unhealthy, ungodly relationships that we may be involved in, and God's like, cut that thing off. Do you see how toxic, toxic it is already for you? And we're like, no, let me, let me keep it going. Let me protect it now. Ra has to do with attending for one's animal, particularly by providing them a good pasture. So the lesson to learn is to stop feeding our flesh, stop feeding our negative emotions, because emotions are not a bad thing. You know there's good emotions, right? But then there's also negative, there's bad emotions. Stop feeding our negative emotions, but begin to feed our good emotions. Stop feeding ungodly our, our, our relationships. If you know that you're in a place that God's saying, run, get out of there. I'm going to talk about it in point number three, but you better get out of there. Start running. Matthew 16, 24, it says, then Jesus spoke to the disciples and he said this. He said, whoever wants to be my disciple must say no to themselves. They must pick up their cross and follow me. So the first step, if I want to become a disciple, and I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ, I have to first say no to myself. You see, because myself wants to do some things that maybe aren't that good. You see, because my sinful nature might crave some drugs and might, may want me to get high and get drunk. You see, my sinful nature may want me to go and sleep around with some women. You see, my sinful nature may want me to go and beat somebody up. But what I learned is that when Jesus called me, he didn't just say, hey, come over here and follow me. He said, hey, deny yourself. 
It's something that I never did in my entire life. And that's why it was the hardest thing to do. You see, but when I learned who Jesus was, when I learned who he is, when I learned how loving he is, it was not hard for me to say, yeah, I want that. If you're having a hard time denying yourself, it's because you probably don't know how good Jesus actually is. You may not know the fullness of his grace and of his love that's available for you here tonight. We overcome sin when we ask God for forgiveness and we repent. You see, it's not enough for me to just try to handle it all on my own and say, man, I shouldn't be doing that. Some of us were just on Instagram and we're falling into traps left and right. We're on YouTube falling into traps left and right. Some of us have to cut HBO out. Falling into some traps. <laughs> right? And my heart goes out to you because I, I help so many people that are stuck in cycles. And I've been in cycles myself and I see what it does to people. I've, I've, I've experienced being stuck in a cycle is so frustrating. When you're in a cycle in your mind and you can't overcome these thoughts, it's very frustrating. But we can't overcome it. Don't believe the lie that you're going to be like this for the rest of your life. Don't believe the lie that because someone in your family was like this, this is your destiny too. That's literally what, what that is. It's a lie. Generational curses could be broken off of you right here tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. There's power in Jesus' name. My second point, we said stop feeding our sinful nature, but number two is stop, start feeding on the word. It's not enough for me just to cut off these temptations and cut these things off and, and now just have no, no new nutrition's coming in, no new food coming in. I got to get a new diet. I got to begin to start reading the word, diving into the word. Jesus already told us what we should be eating. Matthew 4, 4 in the New King James Version, it says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So I don't get my, my I don't get life off of you see, this is the thing, we're trying to get life and, and through experiences, having fun, going out, going partying, going through all these different things. I get life and satisfaction from the Word of God. I get life and satisfaction from Jesus. I've tried getting satisfaction in a lot of different things and they did not work. Because there's only one place that you could be satisfied from because there's only one that knows what truly satisfies you. Even deeper than my wife knows me, God knows me. Even deeper than my mother and my father knows me, God knows me. Which means that he knows exactly what I need. God knows your deepest cries. God knows your deepest struggles. Psalms 119.11, it says, your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. See, what helps us to uh, avoid and overcome sin is not just having a good plan, it's having the word inside of us. Because to actually overcome sin, you're going to have to walk in some authority. To actually defeat these temptations and, and, and overcome what's coming your way right now, you need to walk in authority. Authority comes from the word. That's where the authority comes from. When the devil's offering you lies, when the devil's offering you, offering you temptation to slip away, we got to speak with authority. We got to look at that thing that's being offered to us and say, no, in the name of Jesus, I do not receive that. In the name of Jesus, I cast that down. I dismantle it. You have no power, no authority over me. You got to get a little mad at it. 
You used to tick and get mad at all the wrong things. Now it's time to get mad at the right thing. Get mad at sin. Right? You get mad if someone cuts you off. You get mad if someone unfollows you on Instagram. I'm unfollowing them right now. Jeez. That's it. That's over. I mean, we get, we get silly mad about a lot of stuff. <clears throat> Let's shift that. Get mad at sin. I, see, I've been sober from um, alcohol for seven years. Now, now, this is the thing. I began to hate it. You see, when I was in it, I enjoyed it. I thought it was tight. I grew up around this since I was younger. But then I started hating it because God started revealing to me what this is actually doing to my family. He started showing me that, man, there's poison in your family. There's a cancer in your family, and it's the alcohol. You see, when I started seeing what it did to my dad and to my mom, I began to hate it. Hate it. If you're still dabbling in something, you don't really hate it. You have that love-hate relationship, but you still end up running back to it, which means that's not real hate. That's like when there's someone that's like, oh, I don't want to be with him because he, he cheated on me. But then they go back. You're not really done with that guy. Stop playing. Well, he, he hit, hit me on my arm right here, and he, you know. And everyone around you saying, leave him. Leave that guy. Run. He's a loser. Get out of the way. Get him out the way. And we run back to him. We're not really done. There's a tie there. You see, and so with sin, it's not just some innocent thing. If I start tapping into sin, the goal, the goal of the devil is to get me to begin to make an agreement with him. The goal of the devil in this, in, when he's attacking us with sin and temptations is to cut off our communication with God. He wants to get us in a place where we feel so dirty that we can't even approach God's throne. He wants to get us to a place where we're so deceived that we forget about God's grace and how loving and forgiving he actually is. No matter if you're in high waters of sin right now, the good news is that God loves you right now. You could be underwater right now, drowning. He still loves you no matter where it is that you're at in your life. That's great news. My third point how to overcome sin is run from it. Man, I ran from a lot of things before. Ran from a lot of things before. And I always got away. I'm just telling you straight out, I was all up dipping. I knew how to hop fences, barbed wire, everything. I get in that barbed wire, like, I get in there. I don't know if I had any but runners up in here, but... Dogs, everything, I don't care. You know that move where like when the dogs come in and you jump up and then you do that kick at the same time in case he's trying to latch on you? You gotta run like you're scared of what could happen if that thing catches you. Like when sin is coming, when sin is tempting you, when there's things trying to grab you, when, you, when you're looking at, uh, on your phone and you're being tempted to look something up that you know you shouldn't be looking up, when the wrong people come around you, we got to run, not walk away, not just say, well, I didn't do it. I just hung out with them. You smell like it, though. <laughs> you smell just like them. Like, we got we to gotta get to a place where we have zero tolerance for sin. Zero tolerance. Because the more you tolerate sin, the more you get trapped by sin. The more you become addicted to sin. And when you're in a place where you're addicted to the sin, it's a lot harder to break it when you're so invested in it compared to breaking it when it first showed up on your, on your steps. Cut it off early. We all have those, no one has an excuse. Jesus is always giving us a way out. 
He always gives us a way out of sin. Whatever it is that you're in right now, and not just sin, he, he gives you a way out of everything that we're going through. There's always a way. Never give up hope. There's always hope. Matthew 6, 13, it says, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You see, what it's saying is, is that our focus is to be delivered from the evil one, not to be buddy-buddy with the, the evil one. As a believer, as a Christian, when Satan knocks on my door, I, what God wants me to do, what he's telling me to do is not bring him in and say, hey, come on, let's hang out, sit on the chair. Well, hey, can I get you something to drink? The, the focus as a, as a believer is that's my enemy. And when, when I have an enemy, I want nothing to do with that enemy. Has somebody ever backstabbed you before? Or done you bad? But BC days though? You know BC days like before Christ? And even now? You see before if someone did you bad, you don't want nothing to do with them. You even tell people, don't bring up their name around me. Don't, we don't, talk, we don't say that name around here. It's like a sin just to say their name around you. We don't tolerate it. See, God wants his children to stop tolerating it. Our father doesn't tolerate it. Why would we? We're all in the same household. Those of you that are believers, we have the same father. If you're not a believer, the good news is you could join the family. Jesus is for everyone. When you're running from something, do you understand this, that it takes all of your strength to actually run away from something? How many of you guys are runners? No one likes running, right? For the most part, I see like three hands from some teenagers in like sixth grade, like I love running, oh my gosh, so good at it. Oh, I never get tired, pastor. It's because you're in sixth grade, that's probably why. That might have something to do with it. I'm, I'm at the gym now, and I'm, I'm getting used to running a mile a day, and it is not easy. I remember in high school and middle school, I used to be able to run a good mile and a good time. That don't happen no more. It doesn't. It's just different. But it takes, so, and people don't like running because of the, the, the pressure that it puts on your body, the amount of endurance that it actually takes to run and not quit. You see, God doesn't want you to just run and then stop and hang out with sin. He wants you to run and don't stop running. It's a marathon, keep it going. Keep running. When do we ever stop running from sin, pastor? Never. We never stop running, but this gets hard. Like I'm tired. A lot of stuff is going on in the family. You know, my wife just left me or my, my, my son's acting up. What, can I take a break, a breather? That breather could destroy your whole life. What do you mean, can I take a breather? You're already in a mess and you're saying, since I'm in a mess right now, I want to take um, a, a breather so I could get in a bigger mess. The, the running never ever stops. You know what happens is, one thing that, that helps me out is I put up borders around me, boundaries. I have red flag zones. Little fish wire, when someone goes, that trigger me, oh, no, that's, nope, cut it off. Because I don't want to even give it a second of my time because I've, I've seen that the devil, we think, like, oh, yeah, the devil, he's under my feet. I just step on him and he doesn't get me. Pfft, too blessed to be stressed. Like, I don't, that. <laughs> don't fool yourself. The devil is crafty. And the worst thing that a, a fighter could ever do is, is underestimate their opponent. That's the worst thing that could happen. They don't watch their moves. They don't study them. They don't, they don't watch film. They just think, I'm going to walk in there and boop, boop. I'm, I'm going to just beat them. No, it's not how it's going to work. You see, I don't want to give the devil an inch. Not even an inch. 
Am I perfect? No, I'm not perfect. This isn't I'm talking about my, am I a perfect Christian? Thing. What I'm talking about is how to run from sin, have victory over sin, but stay victorious over sin. That's what I'm talking about. You see, some of us, if you have a phone problem, the left phone on, yeah. Some, some people might have to throw their phones away, and no, I'm just kidding. But if you have a phone problem, don't just go up on your phone and just, let me just see what, let me see what happens if I go like this. Let me click on that website and see what happens. Oh my gosh, I didn't, what? I can't believe that. What is that? Run from it. That means when you get the thought, just the thought of it, I'm, ca I'm capturing that thing and, and, and dismantling it right there. Boom, boom. Go to your leadership right away. Boom. Hey, go to your spouse. Pray for me. I just got this thought. And let's overcome it right now. I want to overcome that thing in seed form, not when it's full grown. Because in the seed form, I just come with this nice little shovel thing and... You're out of there. It's an easy, busy thing. When it's fully grown, that thing, now I got to come with the axe. And I got to be like, hey, can you get an axe and help me too? All right, how many people can help me with this axe? All right. And you got to get all kinds of people just to help you through that mess. I'm trying to knock it down and destroy it before it's, it even grows. But that has to do with running from it. We'll never actually overcome it if we're not willing to run from it. Some of us, we need to get some strength, some spiritual strength, and start, and start using it. So I'm going to call up the worship team back up. And the title of this sermon, did I ever say the title? I don't think I did, Pastor Marco. Let it die. Oh, it's back there. Hey, there it is. Let it die. I got, it's because the crying and all that, that messed me up, so. Whew. All right. I told the Holy Spirit to have his way. He said, all right, boom. So we're all getting something. Now, the title of the sermon is Let It Die. And we're talking about dying to sin. Killing the sin in our life. Killing whatever it is that, that you're, you feel like you're struggling with right now. What I want to do is wave, wave your phones in the air real quick. Wave your, wave your phones. Okay. If you use a notepad or something, wave that notepad in there. Whatever you use, I want you to begin writing something down while the worship team, we're going to do one more song. And what you're going to write down, you're going to write down things that you feel you need to lay down to Jesus tonight. You're going to title this, Things That Are Dying Tonight. That's the title. Write down on the top, Things That Are Dying Tonight. And underneath it, we're going to write down what it is that needs to die tonight. And for some of us, it might not be sin. It might be a sickness that needs to die tonight. You might need a miracle and a healing in your life and your body today. And you're going to write that down. It might be restoration for your family. Maybe there's division in your family. And that division needs to die tonight. Whatever it is that you're, you want to bring to Jesus, begin to write that down. And the worship team, we're going to do one more song. And... As you, guys, as you guys begin to write this down, we're going to take action after this. So like I said, this, we're, not, we're, we're not just doing, this is, a, this is a special night. We're getting free tonight. I believe as you write those things down, that you're getting freedom. I believe that as you think about, some of us might not know what to put down. God's going to start dropping things in your spirit. Some of us, there's some addictions that we have to lay down, some drugs. You might have to lay down drugs tonight. You might have to lay down alcohol tonight, lust tonight. Be honest with yourself. Don't worry, no one's gonna read this. This is for you. The best thing that you could do is be real with yourself and be real with God. That's the best thing that you can do. If I'm struggling with this, I'll, hey, God, this is where I'm really at. God already knows where you're at. He just wants to talk to you about it. He just wants to help you with where you're at. If you're dealing with depression, guys, I, I want to help you with that depression. Let's write it down and let's, let's conquer that tonight.
Thank you so much for tuning in to today's message. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered. Don't forget to check out some other messages we have on our YouTube channel and share, subscribe to thewayworldoutreach.org. We love you. God bless you. Have an amazing week.